Hello everyone, I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer, and welcome back to another video of Oblivion Builds in Depth. Um, I decided to make another one of these because it was really fun at the end of making the Battle Mage one. I was like, I want to make another one of these. So I'm going to make another one. Today we're going to be doing the Assassin build that I made uh, years ago, I guess. Two years ago, three years ago, I don't remember exactly. Probably two. And um, I'm just going to talk about how you play this build in depth. So, your class for this one, we're going to rock a Khajiit, okay? And uh, it's just for the stealth stuff, really. You can rock a Khajiit, you can have speed and agility as your attributes, you can use the thief sign and have a stealth specialization. And your seven skills are going to be alchemy, blade, light armor, sneak, illusion, restoration, and acrobatics, okay? What I would highly recommend doing is going through the Thieves Guild and getting the Boots of Spring Heel Jack and the Grey Cowl. Now, you can't keep the Boots of Spring Heel Jack unless you use a glitch um, to keep the effects. Really, if you don't want to use the glitch, go for the Grey Cowl instead of the Boots because the Grey Cowl is a little bit better, in my opinion. And plus, the Boots only do one effect. You can always enchant stuff to increase your acrobatics if you want. Now, there's one other item that I really would think would benefit you for this build, which is the Ring of Treachery, okay? Or, if you find it, the Ring of Thieves, okay? And now, the Ring of Thieves is worn by the Grey Fox, so, uh, you know, I did a little bit of research on rings in this game. So, if you want to kill him for it, sure, I wouldn't recommend doing that, because you get the Grey Cal, but if you want to kill him for the ring... Why not? It's a sneak 15, security 10. But the other ring, the Ring of Treachery, I highly recommend getting. It fortifies all of your stealth skills. So acrobatics, merchantile, light armor, security, sneak, and speechcraft. It doesn't do marksman. And speechcraft, 10 points. And you're going to be using acrobatics, light armor, sneak, and in the beginning of the game, if you don't have the skeleton key, security. But you're not going to need the security because, well, um, most people get the um, skeleton key. The merchantile bonus is handy, but mainly the light armor sneak and acrobatics is good. So as an assassin, your primary focus in the beginning of the game, um, just like the battle mage, you're not going to be using a lot of magic in the beginning. You know, illusion, eh, not really that useful in the beginning of the game. Or restoration, it's really just healing yourself or acrobatics. You're really just going to be using your blade and light armor and sneak skill. And you're just going to be sneaking around killing people. So the main way that you kill people with this build is you sneak around and stab them in the back. I would recommend um, using a dagger because a dagger has a really good backstab bonus you can get. But if you can't find a decent dagger, stick with a longsword. You know, longsword has a 3x on it. and if I'm not mistaken, a dagger gets a, I want to say a, oh sorry about the hiccups, a 6x bonus on it, so 6 times the damage. And you know, in the beginning of the game, it doesn't really matter, right, because a dagger does 1 and a longsword does 2, so they both do exactly the same. But at the end of the game, when a longsword does, you know, 20, 25. Yeah, it's 75 damage, but if a dagger does 6 and it's 15, it's going to do 90. It's going to do more damage, okay? The other thing about the dagger is you're going to be able to get a bunch of swings off before the person can wield their sword, okay? Or bow, or just look at you to cast spells at you. So it's very important that you get very good at daggers in this game. Now, the beginning of the game, pretty simple, just sneaking around. Use, level up your alchemy skill, because poisons are going to be very, very useful. Poisons are as useful, but on this build they're especially useful because you can get some like a paralysis poison, or you can just do it in general damage health poison over long periods of time. And those poisons over long periods of time are really going to help you, because if you have to run away from someone, they're still going to take damage from them. Those are the poisons you really want to make in this game. So as you level up um, through the middle of the game, you're gonna have this illusion spell. Now, illusion's really, really, really easy to grind up. All you gotta do is just cast charm on people. That's all you gotta do, or cast invisibility on yourself, okay? Now, invisibility is a level 50 spell. You probably 
won't be able to wield it in the beginning of the game, but I would highly recommend leveling up Illusion just as soon so you can get basically um, the invisibility and the paralysis spell. Okay, now paralysis is very important. What you can do with this build is after you go through, you know, the Thieves Guild, you get the Grey Cowl. You can also go through the Mages Guild and get yourself a Staff of Paralysis made from, you know, because you have to get a Mages Staff. So it's a free Staff of Paralysis for you. Very, 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 very useful. Restoration is there. Really, you can use it to help before you have Paralysis and Invisibility by also buffing up your Sneak. Eventually you're going to be able to sneak to where you can just jump around someone they're not going to see you. But in that mid game, use Restoration for Fortifying Sneak. That's a very, very good skill to have. Also, Restoration, um, some healing spells would be very nice because your character, as they level up, they're not going to be able to take as much damage. You can grind up Endurance in the beginning of the game so they have high Endurance, but Light Armor is still not as effective at protecting you as Heavy Armor. So the more you play the game, the weaker your character is going to be relative to other characters unless you get that sneak attack off. If you get the sneak attack off, it's going to be really, really good. If you don't, your character is not going to be very strong in, like, one-on-one -on -one fights, maybe. But when it comes to multiple opponents, this guy sucks at fighting multiple opponents. Um, what I would do is carry around a claymore for yourself because a claymore is going to help um, with melee fights because it has more range than all the other melee weapons, or a hammer if you just want to use a hammer for some reason. Um, but the claymore is there for the blade skill. Using the claymore is going to make it so that if you get stuck in a heads up fight, that you can keep them away from you so that you don't take damage. The light armor is going to let you move around a little bit faster too, so you're going to have an easier time dodging them. You have that acrobatic skill, very very important that you use it to jump around. Um, eventually you're going to be able to dodge as well with acrobatics. You can unlock acrobatic dodging. Very cool skill to have. Excellent skill to have. Um, that's going to help you just dodge them in general. But use your acrobatics um, to kite them around. Acrobatics is a very... It's a skill that, as a skill, I think it's a little bit underappreciated. As an ability that your character can do at any time if they have even a little bit of fatigue, it's very good. You can use it so where, if you're taking too much damage, you can jump around and mess up the enemy's AI and use the environment to your advantage to really take them out, you know, or just give yourself time to heal. So what I would do is if you're an assassin and you're in a situation where there's multiple enemies, any enemies that have range, take them out first. They're the biggest threat to you as an assassin. The ones that shoot spells, or the ones that shoot arrows because they can snipe you from your hiding perches you know your hidey perches things so if you have you know if you're that guy that really likes to perch on stuff take out the archers and mages first um if you want a ranged attack i would go with a bow for the sneak damage bows and sneak is actually the in my opinion the most overpowered way to play oblivion because if your sneak is high enough and you decide to rock yourself a bow, then you're just going to 3x all the damage all day long, and they won't see you, because there's a point where you can sneak and hit someone and they won't see you. So if you want kind of a little bit of an easier build, replace the acrobatic skill with marksman. And if you do do that, uh, freaking abuse marksman. Like, that's the only skill you really need to level up, that and sneak. Late game, that's when you're going to start enchanting things. So late game is when you're going to find the Ring of Treachery. I would also go with rings that increase your sneak until it gets to 100. Once your sneak's at 100, you really don't need to level it up anymore. So you could go with the blade skill to maximize your damage. As this assassin character, the only thing that you really need to level up, if all, let's say all your skills are 100, okay? The only thing that you really need is that initial damage. So go with Blade. So you have this illusion, this illusion skill set with you, okay? What you should do with it is get yourself Paralysis, okay? Now you're gonna have Alchemy, so you're gonna be able to mitigate your low magic because this class, you're gonna have, I mean, a little bit higher magic because of Alchemy, but the main skills here is gonna be Strength and Agility and Speed. 
Those are your three main kind of uh, things, along with some willpower and some intelligence. So your magic is the weak point. Your fatigue, phenomenal, probably going to be phenomenal. Your health is probably going to suck, actually. Your magic, it's okay, but the damage you do is going to be really good. That's why I want you to stick with daggers with this build. But with paralysis, use paralysis to knock enemies out of a fight. Either you got one guy left, you can knock him to the ground, take him out, or you can paralyze someone so that you go from a 1v2 to a 1v1 fight and you can focus on one guy. Paralysis is there to help you fight off multiple enemies at once. And what you do is if the enemies are slow enough, you can actually like line them up with each other so only one can attack you at once. But if they're fast enemies like goblins, you're not gonna be able to do that. So what you're gonna do is paralyze one. And start, if you can't, let's say you're fighting five melee guys, okay? Take out the weakest ones first with this guy. Because this guy, you're, you're already squishy. You're going to have to deal with DPS. Deal with the, the weak ones first. You can take them out the quickest, and you can start getting rid of the, that damage that you're going to be taking. So you paralyze the top guy, or the top two guys, and then you go after the weaker guys. Then you just go from there, and eventually, if there's one enemy left, you can just paralyze them and beat them up. Now, if they resist par paralysis, good luck. Okay, that's all I have to say about that. Invisibility is there to help you sneak around, okay? So if there's a situation where you really should sneak around some guy and kill some guy behind him, then do that. Invisibility is there to help you. Now, invisibility, I don't like Chameleon. I think it's a dumb spell set. I mean, it's kind of cool. It's kind of like discount invisibility where it, it helps you sneak. But what I do is use invisibility and don't loot anything. Just go behind people and take them out. You are gonna have a high sneak, which also means you can pickpocket. So if you see an enemy, like, take for instance an archer, who they're gonna, they had their bow wielded, but they, you know, archers go into melee combat, and, you know, you're kind of afraid of them, maybe pickpocket their knives, you know? Maybe someone's got potions or a key, or you need some extra lock picks because you want to try to unlock a door first, pickpocket them. You know, and if you want to pickpocket people just because, go for it. You know, it's really, really pickpocket's a skill in Oblivion that's not as good as in Skyrim, but you can still use it. You can still use your pickpocket skill. Uh, you know, give yourself an advantage in a fight. Disable the enemy's weapons. You know, if there's a guy who, uh, sorry, a goblin, like take for instance a goblin shaman who might have a staff and a knife. You don't know, but they might have a staff and a knife, and they have the knife wielded. Take their staff. You know. Really, anything, any kind of situation like that, your sneak doubles as a pickpocket skill. And this build's a lot more simpler than the battle mage. You just constantly sneak up on people and assassinate them. That's what you do. Stick with daggers, maybe a claymore. You're going to have a shield as well. And the shield is there. I wouldn't really use the shield so much for um, melee combat because you're squishy. I would use it for some kind of buff to yourself, okay? Something like it helps you with blade skill, it helps your fatigue if you want, just more buffs, okay? So a lot of your armor in this game um, is gonna help you with sneaking. One of the things that I would recommend is, you know, do the Thieves Guild, also get the shrouded armor, like the hood or, you know, boots, whatever, the, or sorry, the whole entire armor suit as a kind of early game it helps you sneak around type of thing. Um, you're not going to be able to repair stuff very well because you don't have an armor skill. So, you know, you can buff that up. That'll buff your health up too if you do it in the beginning of the game. I don't like to efficiently level, but if you are going to go that route of leveling up your armor skill, do it in the very, very beginning of the game so that every time you level up, you get a little bit more extra health, you know. So, in terms of, like, the gear you want in the very, very end of the game, dagger, light armor, you know, glass, everything. I don't know about, t you know, I haven't done a lot of light armor type stuff. If you want a cool shield, try to find yourself a mirror shield, because that thing's cool. The mirror shield is, it's one of those items you, you kind of have to get really, really, really lucky with to find, but um, all it does is it reflects damage and spells, so if you get in a tough heads-up fight and you don't have an enchanted shield, it, you know, it's a glass shield that allows you to 
reflect damage on people, right? But, really, this build's a lot more simpler than the Battle Mage. You sneak around, kill people if you want to, you know, level up your bow, level up your bow. If you have a bow, instead of leveling up, uh, using your, en your enchantments on your blade, use it on your bow, okay? Now, for your dagger, what I would recommend is carrying a couple different daggers. I would carry daggers that literally since you're gonna have a lot of you're gonna have a lot of space okay carry a dagger with every damage enchantment on it that's something that you should do because you know you might have an enemy that's weak to fire weak to shock weak to frost okay but what i would also do is carry a dagger of silence so that you can silence mages okay that's a really good one i believe silence is under the illusion class let me check right now Illusion also has silence. I knew it. I thought uh, silence was part of destruction. But illusion's part of silence. But since you have low magic, if you don't use invisibility a lot, then you can, you know, kind of use silence. But mainly focus on paralysis. It's not that hard to get a dagger of silence. You know, it'd be different if it was a long sword where, you know, it's a lot of weight. But your strength's already going to be a little bit higher because you're using swords. So you're going to be able to carry a lot. And that Dagger of Silence really isn't going to do much. Your Paralysis you can also use to paralyze enemies. And also, like, if they're low enough enemies, you can mess with their brains and do Demoralize and stuff like that. Fear. Make it so that they run away. Anything you really want when it comes to, you know, whether you do Fear or Paralysis, you can do that. You just can't do turn undead. Remember that it's part of restoration, not um, illusion. So you can't really do any turn undead stuff, which kind of sucks, but you know, you can't have everything. One more thing, one more item you can get. I forgot about the existence of this item, but if you want to go with it, like, let's say you're kind of a low level, um, and you don't necessarily, you know, want exactly to get a bunch of gear. So let's say you're low level, right? And you, know, you don't have, you have light armor, but it doesn't really do much. You can also become the top dog, uh, or sorry, a speaker. I think that's the top dog, I don't remember exactly, of the Dark Brotherhood. Now, if you do that... You're going to get the black hand robe and the black hand hood. Okay, now the hood um, and the robe increases your literally all of your assassin skills plus, plus speechcraft. So blade, illusion, marksman, and sneak. So if you want those as early game enchants, go with those. Become leader, literally, Thieves Guild, Dark Brotherhood, back to back. Okay? But... Other than that, guys, that's really all my in-depth assassin knowledge I have for this build. Um, feel free to ask me any questions and comments below. You know, this these videos are really about me sharing all of my knowledge, because I don't know, like, if you got to raid some specific caves to do some stuff, exactly the tactics you use. You know, I'm sure that there's people in the comments, in fact, I know there's people in the comments that know more about this game than I do, and they will be able to give you much helpful information about playing this build in depth. So that's really it for this video, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, feel free to leave a comment. I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer. I suck just as bad as you do at video games. And I'll see you next episode, stream, vlog, or Instagram post of whatever I decide to make.